Hello. We're going to do a quick uh, um, uh, in-service on the EVD, which is uh, external ventricular drain, and that's exactly what it is, a drain for your ventricle for when you have too much pressure or sometimes, in, sometimes infection or sometimes blood. Um, this is when we would hook this up. The first part to this is going to be the, the doctor putting in uh, the hole into the skull and into uh, the ventricle and that is a different uh, in-service. There's really not much to that part. It's just basically getting the cranial access kit and setting it up for the doctor. This is where it's involved for us to set this up so that we can be ready for when he puts in the catheter. We need to be ready to immediately connect it. All right, so uh, uh, equipment you're going to need. You're going to need uh, a Nautis external drainage system. There are a couple of other brands floating around. They basically work the same, but you'll find that some of the pieces don't fit together. Uh, so if you have to use one of those, it's the same process. It's just that you might not be able to hook up the laser and different things like that. This is the box that it comes in, okay? So just so you know what it looks like. And uh, you're gonna need a pressure sensing cable and you're gonna need a laser level, which looks like that. And it says Nautis on it, Nautis. And then you're gonna need a, uh, a transducer. Okay, this is a regular transducer like you would use with a, uh, with a central, I'm sorry, with an arterial line kit. Um, you're also gonna need a cap, like a, just a regular lure lock cap and a flush, okay? Pretend like this flush is sterile, okay? Don't judge me. All right, uh, this is what the drainage system looks like. And I'm gonna take it off of here just for a second so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, and you're gonna see that it has uh, a number scale and it has two scales. One is millimeters of mercury. The other one is centimeters of water. And we only use millimeters of, millimeters of mercury for all, all of our measurements. So that's the one that you're gonna be focused on is the white line over here. Uh, when you first go to set it up, you're gonna ask the doctor, where do you want me to set it up? He's gonna give you an initial CSF, uh, I'm sorry, intracranial pressure to set it up at. And uh, so he's gonna give you a middle millimeters of mercury. And let's say he says 10, you're gonna take this little knob, you're gonna move that little red marker to the 10 and then tighten it back up and you're set, okay? We'll go over leveling a little bit later. Then this hooks onto this pole and if you can see, this is the spe specific pole for this. It doesn't have the little piece in the middle so that you can slide this all the way up and down. You can level it correctly. It's got the blue base. That is the, the pole that you want for these. So we're gonna just set it up kind of high just so we can uh, video a little bit easier for now. Uh, the other parts of this, this the collection chamber right here, and this collection chamber, of course, it's uh, numbered in mLs. And uh, you know, every hour, every however often the surgeon wants, you would drain it under here. You would get your measurement, how much that output was every hour, and then you would drain it into the drainage bag. And we have extra drainage bags for these for when these get full. Um, so uh, once you've set up your pressure right there, then uh, you're going to set it on the pole. And uh, this is the piece that hooks up to the patient. You can see it's got a couple of ports right here and a three-way stopcock. Uh, unless you have been trained to collect CSF, which some of you will be. If you have not been trained to collect CSF, do not collect CSF. Do not pull CSF. Do not flush these unless you have been specifically trained for that. And some of you will be, but we don't want everybody doing that because it's a little bit of a different procedure and you can cause harm to the patient. So we want just a few people trained to do that for now so that they can get a lot of experience and then eventually everybody will be able to do that. So when you first do this, uh, just leave everything open because we're gonna have to flush this line. And uh, I'm just gonna leave this clip on for now, but of course you would take that clip off and, and have the extension. All right, so those are the pieces that you need. Um, once you have set up, set up your pressure, then you're going to uh, uh, flush this, I'm sorry, you're gonna hook up your transducer. So you're gonna take the transducer and the only part you need from this is the actual transducer. So you're gonna unplug that and you're going to unplug that. And this is the only piece you need is this transducer right here. So uh, one of these is gonna get a cap and uh, the other one is gonna be hooked up to the CSF and the other one's gonna be hooked up to a flush. So uh, come over here and you can see that we have our uh, connector right here and uh, the easy way of knowing it is because if you try to hook it up with the cable this way first of all they're mail to mail so they're not gonna fit uh, so they only get really get hooked up one way you can't mess this one up 
Um, sometimes I can mess it up, but I, I won't this time. Okay, and then of course it has a little three-way stopcock right here. And now you have two three-way stopcocks. And I know that's gonna be the confusing part. That's really what the practice helps with taking care of these is knowing what to close and what to open each time. And then right here, uh, we're gonna start with a flush. And you're just gonna hook up a flush. Remember, this is all done sterilely. So don't touch anything, just hook it straight up there. And uh, we're gonna flush this line because you don't want to set this up and hook it up with the patient's CSF. By the time it gets to drainage, you're not gonna have a, a measurement. You need to have it flush completely so that you can get an accurate measurement once you hook it up. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna flush the piece that goes towards the patient, not when it's hooked up to the patient, please. Flush it before you hook up to the patient. You don't wanna be flushing CSF into anybody's skull. All right, so uh, you're just gonna close this to the environment and open it to the uh, meter and you're gonna close it to drain. Okay, so that is gonna allow you to flush. You gotta pull the pigtail at the same time that you flush, and it's gonna allow you to flush the system until it comes out right there, okay? So now we have flushed this initial part, and hopefully you didn't get any bubbles in here. Uh, it's straight uh, fluid because the bubbles will not allow you to get a good measurement because it's gonna compress that air with every pulse. And then you're gonna flush the piece over here. It's very, very short. So now you're gonna turn your stopcock this way. And again, you're gonna pull your pigtail and you're only gonna flush until you get a drop or two in there. You can get more, but you, you really don't need to. If you can see there's a drop hanging in there and it's kind of hard to see in this video. Um, and so now that is flush. Make sure that you have closed your drain chamber, just like I did, just like I forgot to do. You don't want this dripping in there directly. You wanna be able to measure what comes out. All right, so now everything is flushed. Um, and you are technically now ready to hook up to the patient. So if the surgeon is done before you are, go ahead and you can hand them that piece and uh, they'll be able to hook it up to the patient. But hopefully it'll allow us to uh, hook everything up before we hook it up to the patient. So the other piece you're gonna do now, you're gonna hook this up to our monitor. And uh, of course this hooks up just like an art line right here and to the monitor right here and we're not going to be able to get a measurement of course but i just want to show you where to hook it all up okay so this is what it looks like when it's all hooked up now you can just leave this flush here if you want to or you can put a cap on it uh if you leave the flush just remember you're not going to be flushing this please 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 do not hook up a pressure back to the system this is not an art line we are not going to be flushing saline through the system so uh, if you leave this here, just remember that it's not for flushing. So it's better if you just put a cap on it. In fact, let's just do that right now. And so we're gonna take this off and put a cap on. I'm sorry, blue cap. And you're done, okay? That's it, that's what it looks like. So now uh, we're gonna zero this and you can zero it before you hook it up to the patient. Uh, and every time that I talk about zeroing art lines or zeroing EVDs, it's the same procedure. And uh, every time I find out that some people, you know, you zero and you know the process, but you really don't know why you're doing it. Uh, so just to go over that again, the reason you zero all these things is you're, you're equalizing the pressure uh, inside of the system uh, to the atmospheric pressure. So people say, well, you know, I have to be perfectly level when I zero it. Yes, that is best practice, but uh, the atmospheric pressure on the floor is not gonna be any different than at the patient's ear or on the roof of this building. If, you're, if you've ever driven to the mountains and your uh, ears have to equalize when you're driving up, you know that the higher you go, the, the less pressure there is, and the lower you go, the more pressure there is. So, you know, we are at a relatively same level in this building, uh, but it's best practice just to level it before you do it. Uh, and that way there's no questions and you get into that good habit. But uh, really what's gonna change with that is, um, you know, is whatever's going on in, in, the, in the atmosphere at the time that you're zeroing it. You don't need to zero it 20 times a day. You do it once a shift and you're done, okay? All right, so to zero, what you're going to do, what are we measuring? The atmosphere, right? So everything has to be open to the atmosphere. The, the monitor has to read the atmosphere. So we're gonna close the transducer to the system. This closes it to the patient and to drainage. And we're gonna open it to the atmosphere, which is right here, 
okay? This little button is the atmosphere. So you can see closed, open, and it's open to the monitor. So once you do that, you go on your monitor and you just click on any of it and you hit zero and it takes a minute and it says zeroed and you get your zeros right here and you're done, okay? Now this is ready to be hooked up to the patient. Uh, now, when you, when you hook it up, let me come up to the monitor. Uh, you wanna change this label. Um, and so you are going to um, go to, let's see, where is it? Right here, label. And you see how it's got all the different labels on there? Um, you're gonna go to, oops, sorry. Okay, it's being funny with me. ICP, right there. So now it's set up for ICP and it's gonna change to a different color. I think it's white, yeah, it's gonna be white. And, uh, and that's it, we're gonna actually zero it one more time. I'm ready to zero because now, you know, I changed the label, even though it doesn't matter, the machine might just like it if I zero it again. Uh, so now it's zeroing and it's zeroed. Okay, so that is ready to go. That is how you zero. Uh, if you ever have any questions about zeroing, please just ask me, just come to my office and, and I'll go over this with you. I know that, uh, you know, a lot of times you learn it a certain way and I say things that you might've not heard before or are a little bit different. Um, so if you have any questions, just, you know, come to me and we'll talk about it. All right, so now we, we wanna know why are we doing this, okay? This is used on a patient that either has too much, uh, too much pressure for brain swelling, for uh, you know, uh, sodium issues, whatever that is, a trauma, uh, people with uh, uh, bleeds. So if you have too much blood in there, that's causing pressure to build. Uh, this will drain sometimes some of the blood or extra CSF. Um, you can, I'm gonna unplug this so that it stops making noise. Okay, um, and then uh, so this will drain the extra fluid in your brain so that your pressure stays at whatever you set it to, hopefully. Now, um, if the patient has a lot of pressure, you, you, you can have, the patient's pressure might be higher than what you have it set at, uh, but this will drain anything in excess of that pressure and relieve some of that pressure from the patient's brain. So uh, you cannot measure ICP and drain at the same time with the system. You're only gonna measure usually once. Uh, it depends on the type of patient. Sometimes it's once a day. Sometimes it's when you set it up and then not again until days later. But the most common one you see is you know a reading every hour. Uh, it really just depends on the pre on the patient. Trauma patients tend to not need measurement so often because um, you know you want that to drain all the time. And there's two ways of measuring ICP with this, all right? The number one way to measure ICP is with the monitor. To measure ICP with the monitor, remember, follow your lines, and so you know that the transducer has to be touching the patient. So you're going to close to drain right here, okay? Close to atmosphere, close to drain. So now the monitor is connected to the patient, okay? If you do that, you're immediately gonna start getting a reading on your monitor. And that is how you measure your ICP. Now, uh, I didn't go over leveling. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back and do that. Uh, this little laser level right here, there's a little groove. Make sure that the laser is pointing towards the patient. And if you can see, it's got a level right there, okay? It just slides right in there. And if you see the bubble, it's, it's level right now, but this has uh, a little, uh, give right here so you can actually level it. So first you're gonna level, make sure that that bubble is right in the center. You see the bubble? Okay. And then once it's there, you're gonna tighten the screw so that it doesn't become unlevel. And now you're gonna turn on, right here's the on button, turn on your, your laser, you can see the laser. And you're going to level this to uh, basically the exterior ear canal of the patient. Uh, and just, you know, you just bring it down and uh, just put it to the external ear canal. And then once you have it there, you're gonna tighten this up so that this serves as an, an extra safety feature so that if this falls off the pole, it doesn't go down and drain your patient and, and have it, uh, give you a big problem, okay? So that is how you level it to the patient. Now, once you've leveled it, like I said, you're gonna close it to drain 
and you're gonna open it to the patient. So this is open to the patient and closed to drain. That is closed, that is open. That's gonna give you a continuous reading right now of the patient's uh, intracranial pressure and you're gonna see a waveform just like you do with uh, an art line. If that waveform is dampened, do not flush the system. This is not something we're gonna do just like we do art lines. If you have problems, you're gonna to have to either tell the intensivist or get one of the nurses that has had the extra training and they can help you troubleshoot. Okay, so the other way to measure intracranial pressure, uh, you might wanna get closer again. I'm gonna take this level off so you can see better, okay? But uh, so now let's say that we are draining, okay? We're gonna have it closed to the monitor. So now we have the patient open to drain. And you should be seeing if the patient's uh, ICP, intracranial pressure, is higher than 10, you're gonna see that it's draining. If it's lower than 10, it's not gonna be draining. And as you all know, water finds its own level. So whatever pressure is behind that fluid is where it's gonna go. So the second way to measure ICP on a patient is let's say that you're not draining right now. When you put this line straight and you line it up with the numbers on your uh, drain, wherever that fluid stops, okay, let's say that the fluid stopped right here. Look across, that's your ICP, okay? So if the fluid stops right there and you have this straight up and down, that is your ICP. You don't have to hook it up to the monitor. That is very accurate. In fact, when you haven't had time to hook it up to the monitor, as soon as you put it on the patient and the doctor wants to know what the ICP is, this is what you would use. Now, let's say that the patient is draining. Well, you don't know what the ICP is, right? Well, yes, you do. All you do is you take this, you move it all the way up, and you hook it up right there, and then you do the same thing. You will see where that fluid stops, and I, we actually have some fluid in there. It's probably draining onto the bed. Okay. Uh, wherever that fluid stops, that is your ICP. Okay, so, so let's say it stops up here. Now it's 14. So, uh, you know, this is, this is just a quick way to measure ICP. It's acceptable just like it is on the monitor, uh, but the monitor will give you a better waveform uh, so you know that you have a patent line, okay? Uh, but those are the two ways that you measure that. Make sure that if you do this, that you put it right back to where it's supposed to go and that you tighten it so that then the patient continues to drain. These EVDs will have specific orders um, and you need to make sure that you're reading your orders and you're talking about these EVDs in your rounds. And uh, you know, if you see that neurosurgeon round with them, because they will often change the settings and uh, they're pretty good about letting you know, but you know, I wanna make sure that it's passed on well and report and everything, uh, uh, because you will adjust this pressure at different times during the patient's stay. And at one point you'll even clamp it to the patient and allow them to, uh, you know, to not drain. Um, and uh, you also have to watch how much drainage is coming out. Um, you know, some patients put out a lot, some, some put out a little, but if something changes and all of a sudden the patient starts dumping, you need to make sure that you let doctors know. Um, so I think that covers the setup. We, we know what the parts are. We know what, uh, how to hook up the uh, transducer. We know how to level it. We know how to zero it. And, uh, and I've gone over a couple of ways of measuring ICP. Um, if you have any questions, make sure that you uh, just come to me or put them on this post and then I'll answer them as good as I can. Um, and uh, we'll go over the cranial access kit uh, some other time. All right, thanks.